Today I'm reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole world is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. May God add a blessing to the hearing and reading of this holy word. Amen. I am sometimes stunned by the people God calls to carry out God's work. Let's look at a few examples in the Bible. Jacob was a liar. Leah was not very pretty, Joseph was abused, Moses stuttered, Gideon was afraid, Samson was a womanizer, Jeremiah was too young, David was an adulterer and murderer, Isaiah preached without clothes, Jonah ran away from God, Naomi was a widow, Job went bankrupt, Peter denied Christ, The disciples fell asleep while praying. Martha worried about everything. The Samaritan woman was divorced and more than once. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was killing Christians. Timothy had an ulcer. Well, you get the idea. God used all these people to further God's good news to help construct the kingdom of God on earth. What we learn is God can use anyone to further the divine purposes. God does not hire professionals. God calls rookies and apprentices. And those whom God calls, God will not abandon. I think of it as a mentorship or on-the-job training. I picture a father handing over a family business to a child who's been working at his side for years or a mother teaching a child how to make an age-old family recipe as they both sink their hands into the dough side by side. Once we say, here I am, God, send me, God accompanies those that are called. And instead of being fully prepared, God's people learn ministry and do ministry at the same time. Today we meet Isaiah. He is six chapters into his divine work, and only now do we finally hear the story of his call. And during that amazing event, God gives Isaiah what he needs. In this case, forgiveness. God's forgiveness equips Isaiah for the work to which he is called. God's gifts will equip each of us when we respond, Here I am, send me. On this Memorial Day weekend, I want to lift up the story of Pat Durkin, a member of Bethesda United Methodist Church in Maryland. A few years ago, Pat was riding an ocean wave at the beach when a large wave crashed him into the shoreline, breaking his spinal cord 
and causing him to lose the use of his arms and legs. It took months of physical therapy and, and laboring to rebuild his life, and he's still confined to a wheelchair, but the experience somehow made Durkin a new man. This experience has reinforced his belief that God answers prayer, but he could not quite make sense of why such a tragedy came to him until his church introduced him to the Wounded Warrior Project. Once a month, members of Bethesda United Methodist Church go to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center to provide lunch to military personnel who were injured in the war in Afghanistan and to their families. Durkin accompanied the group from Bethesda and found he was able to talk to the men in a way no one else could. He had wisdom and faith to share. It's a God thing, he said. I feel called. Now, Pat would not say that God God brought the surfing tragedy on him, but he would say God has called him from that situation to help and support others. We can say, here I am, Lord, send me, to the work of justice, to the work of unity, to the work of peacemaking, to the work of helping the poor and the hungry and the shelterless. We can say, here I am, to becoming a more faithful and generous steward of the resources God has given us. We can say, here I am, send me, to kindness, to caring, to praying for ourselves and others. God may call us in ways we never imagined, to places we never thought we would go, and to people we never expected to be helping. God does not call the perfect. God perfects the call in imperfect people. And God does not always call the qualified. More often, God qualifies those who are called. And God does not wait until we have all the training and experience we need. God gives the gifts and accompanies us as we learn on the go. And remember, not all callings involve physical work. Some involve your mind or your spirit or your heart, which can be other sources of calling. Let us pray. Great God, as you forgive Isaiah, preparing him for the task of proclaiming your powerful word, prepare each of us with courage and trust that we may see the ways you are calling us to carry out your divine work with eagerness and urgency. Help us turn toward, not away, from the calling you have for us in this time and this place. We pray in the name of the one who sacrificed everything to carry out your call, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Eternal God, you are the creator of our years and the redeemer of our history. You have dignified us with loves and loyalties. Hear our prayers for your mercy on this day. We offer this red candle, lit in honor of all whose sacrifices we recall in humility and in gratitude. This white candle is lit for the dream and hope of peace among all the nations of the world and for peace within our own country. The blue candle is lit in honor of the freedoms that we have and for the actions of those who gave their lives, energies, and strength 
to the struggle for liberty. God of us all, hear our prayer. 